Welcome back to this World of Warcraft Let's Play. Yo, it's Sambo, and joining us, as always, is Seraphis, our level 31 Worgen Mage. Say good day, Seraphis. Our fates are intertwined. That's right, our fates are indeed intertwined as we're here in the Night Song Woods in the middle of Ashenvale. And of course, if you joined us in the last episode, you'll know that we were up here coming towards the zone of Felwood. If we have a look at the old map here, you can see if we carry on in this direction here along this path northwards, we'll actually end up in Felwood, which is not where we're going. It's a very high level zone. But of course, we've got a quest up the top there where we have to uh, look for some treants to try and find a wooden key finally finding this wooden key here and if we just recap that quest we got to use it to obtain the iron shaft portion of Dato's rod and uh, we've been on that one for quite some time but before then we've got this one down here up on the ridge in the hands of the perverse and you can see, if you remember here, we've got a satyr that was uh, basically had turned friendly. He'd come to our side and he's going to help us in terms of getting some regents to help the sick little girl that is in Astrona. And of course, what we have to do here is obtain five fallen moonstones off the satyr. And that's exactly what we're going to do right now. So without further ado, let's get right into it in the beautiful forest of Ashenvale as Vista has a bit of a spaz. Come on. Sometimes you need to give it a bit of a kick, I think. Tell it that we love it, perhaps. Maybe that'll help it out. <laughs> Silly thing. Oh, there we go. All right, and so, of course, we've come along this path, and it said in the quest text that we've got these little side paths that come up the side of the plateau here, and that's exactly where we have to go in order to try and find the plateau. And what a stunning view it is. Look at that out there, folks. We've got that wonderful night elf structure out there, and the beautiful purple, my favorite, as you know, the purple color of Ashenvale. Just wonderful. Anyway, enough gawking for now. We've got to head up here. And let's see what we find. What do we find? Discovered the night run. And there it is. So there we go. You can tell that this is exactly where we need to be because, of course, we have these fell musk, fell sworn up here, the satyrs. And they're the ones that we need. They're the ones that are up on the plateau. So the plateau, as you can see here on the map, let's have a look. Yep, the plateau is actually basically a little village. And it looks like it's called the night run. So if we wait for Vista to calm down. Come on, Vista. Let's have a bit of a spin around here and close your eyes, folks. We'll spin it around. Sometimes that sort of seems to clear it up for some reason. I don't know why. There we go. All right, let's get right into this. We've got to collect five fallen moonstones. So let's open up with a good old frost bolt. Slow them down when they come running to us. Oh, that didn't kill them? Good lord. All right, now remembering too, these are level... 23 and we're level 31 so it should be a lot easier than that to kill them not sure what happened there we shall try again with good old arcane blast yeah there you go so arcane blast definitely knocks them out and there we go a fallen moonstone let's have a look at that in our bags here it is we'll pop it up into this empty bag and you can see it's a brilliant sheen glistens upon the stolen moonstone with a hint of something powerful within. So we've got to get five of these and hopefully our friendly satyr will be able to use them to uh, cure the little sick girl in Astronaut. Fingers crossed this time. We've tried so many times and she's still sick. So hopefully this will be one of the last legs of the quest. Yeah, interestingly, of course, not every single one of these satyrs actually drops a moonstone. So we'll probably have to kill more than five, obviously. And it's a cool area up here, isn't it? Look at it, the way it's laid out. They've got this nice little secluded area for their little village. And I must admit, I didn't realize that. I've forgotten about it up on the map here. It just looks like a plain old plateau. I realize that there'd be like a gathering of satyrs here. And there we go. Fallen moonstone number two. Oh, and do you see what I see? That's right. A tin vein. We're not going to let that go by. And of course, we're going to have to get ourselves back to Darnassus at some point. Look at these bags. I'm such a hoarder. Um, we've got lots of things to put on the auction house and sell off to the vendor. And of course, very shortly, we'll be leveling to 32, I'd imagine, which may mean we need to do some training. In fact, we'll check that out in just a sec. 
Oh, come on, Vista. What are you doing? It's chugging along. I honestly don't know what it's doing. It's quite funny, you know, there's this horrible thing on Vista called Windows Defender, and I just, no matter what, I can't get rid of it. It's like some kind of um, antivirus thing. I don't know. I honestly don't need it. I've got enough of my own antivirus solutions, of course. So I've disabled it, I've told it never to run, and the other day I actually found out, there we go, three or five of those by the way, and we got ourselves a nice buff on, oh look at that, we've got a ghostly one there, a rogue shadow stalker, didn't actually see that till we were nearly on top of him, it was effective disguising on its behalf. Yeah, so anyway, a Windows Defender, I've basically, I've told it never to run, and I've certainly told it never to ever scan the hard drive, because it's a waste of time. And what do you think I caught it doing just before the start of our episode? That's right, it was scanning. A huge system scan of the entire computer, even though I've got it turned off. Do you know what I've even done? I've actually even gone in and deleted the executable for it, completely removed it, and it just keeps coming back. It's, it's outrageous. So I've got a funny feeling that that's what's been causing all of our little frame rate drops. So uh, yeah, I've got to Google up and find a way of getting rid of it once and for all. Honestly, it just it's like a virus itself, which is ironic. You just can't get rid of it. It keeps coming back no matter what you do. Oh, hilarious. Anyway, all right, we just need one more of these fallen moonstones. And there we go, a shadow stalker up there hiding in the shadows. All right, hopefully he'll drop a moonstone for us. And there we go, we got one all done. Let's mount up because of course now, finally we're gonna head up north here, up into, what is it called, Rainwood Retreat, past there, and start getting close to the edge of Fellwood. And by the way, we'll just, we'll just stick our nose in and have a bit of a look at that too, so you can see what it's like. Anyway, just reading the quest again, Rain is connect, uh, correct, rather, I know about Dartol's creation and the tree ants in the area, at least I did once. They've become corrupted now, their nature is twisted. To find the next piece of the rod, you'll have to find the key to open the chest it's in. And the wooden key is on one of the treants northeast of here, uh, near the Fellwood border at the Howling Vale. So the Howling Vale is where we're headed up the top there. Once you have it, look for a small glade through the tunnel at the Vale, and the chest should be hidden around there. So in other words, we've got to um, kill treants, and don't worry, they're corrupted ones, so we're not doing anything nasty. By the way, look at the cool little um, pieces of architecture here. They're the Sater pieces of architecture. It's awesome, isn't it? I just love this. There's probably actually multiple ways we can get to the uh, area we need to go on, but we'll follow the main road. Uh, we need to go up the north there and kill off these corrupted treants. Uh, hopefully one of them will actually net us a key. And then once we've got that key, of course, we have to find the little secluded area in the glade and make our way and try and find a uh, chest. The key that we drop, of course, is going to open up that chest, and in there will be the other part of the rod that we need. All right, so you're starting to get an idea now as well as it opens up here, just how huge Ashenvale is. We're in a completely new area now. We're way up north. In fact, there is a treant. Even though it's not way up north, we can probably still actually take this one down to see if it'll drop a key. In fact, yeah, you can see if we hover over it there, it does actually say that it will drop, uh, well, it could drop a wooden key. And of course it's going to be random, so we'll have a look. No, it didn't get one. So let's mount back up. And there it is, the classic music, classic night elf music. Absolutely love it. All right, so even though there, there's, there's these tree ants here, we'll just keep going north to where we need to go because I do want to show you the entrance to Fellwood. Let's grab this tin in the meantime, of course. Money, 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 money. Money on the auction house. Yeah, look, this is just such a classic, isn't it? The sights and sounds just are absolutely reminiscent of Vanilla WoW. You can't get any more Vanilla WoW than this, of course, if you're playing Alliance, I mean. Certainly so many memories. Now, look at this. It just splits right out. It's just, it's freaking huge, people. Seriously. Um, let's take off along this side path here. And we'll start getting uh, our hands on some of these treants, see if they'll drop a key for us. From memory, the key takes a while to drop. It's not a very um, random, well, it's random drop, but it's a bit rare. Now, don't you love the death animation 
on the trance. And there we go, we already have the key. Yay us. Let's have a look and see where we need to go now. Of course, look at this. On the map, it's actually marked now. Back in the day, back in the old days of Vanilla WoW, you never had that marker on the map, and you actually had to try and discover where it is yourself, which was, I think, a lot more fun too, trying to figure it out. Listen to that music. Oh, seriously, I'm, I've said this before and I'll say it again. I wish someone would make a real life uh, Ashenvale Forest. I would go there. I would pay money to go there, seriously. Here we go, we've discovered the Howling Vale. Now I've got to find my way in. And I, you know what, even with the marker on the map, I still can't find it. I think we need to mount up and perhaps go round the back way. I think, yeah, look at that, you can see sneaky here is what i was talking about a few episodes ago you can see once you have it look for a small glade through the tunnel at the veil and you can see on the actual map itself they've marked a little trail coming off the main road and that's our clue so all of these things tie in together it's very cool so we're going to go up north a bit more and find that path because even though it was just beside us here we can't actually get up there we have to go north and then find that path and cut our way in so we'll do that instead in the meantime, we're going to um, begin to see the zone of Thelwood, and that's basically it beyond the trees over there. And in fact, what we might do before we go and collect the key is take a bit of a peek in. Now, we've got to be a bit careful because it's a much higher level than us. And by the way, look at this. We're starting to see some paths go off to the side here. Let's have a look on the map. Yep, it's I think it's down that one, down the ruins there. And you can see a path, and that basically winds up into the hills there. And I think that there's a cave at the top of them or something like that. Oh, 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 minerals, mining. And look, there's another path going up there. It's just, so, it's just incredible. There's so many nooks and crannies in this forest. It's unbelievable. You could just wander around it for days, get lost, <clears throat> have a heck of a good time. Whoops, and I did an AOE there. And of course, that means we accidentally aggroed the Elder Shadow. Uh, what is it? An, a, oh, I can't even read that. An Elder Shadow Horn Stag. <laughs> Geez, some of the names, seriously, they read okay, but when you try and talk them out, when you try and say them, gosh, they're hard. And that. That thing took ages to actually to kill. That was amazing. Gosh. Anyway, we can skin it, of course. And there we go. Our skinning has actually increased to 139. Now, that's actually something that we need to be doing as well. We need to be concentrating a bit more on our skinning because otherwise we're going to out-level ourselves again. Uh, as we go to the next zones, we're probably not going to be able to actually skin the animals, which is a bit bad. So we'll do a bit of that. Now you can see here, see the trees over here starting to get a bit corrupted. They're not like the normal Ashenvale trees. You can see the green there oozing up from their roots. And that's because Felwood is an incredibly corrupted zone. Hence its name, Fell. Fell. Yucky. It's a completely corrupted wood. And you'll start to see, it's amazing by the way, when you cross over into zones. Here we are, we're now in Felwood, discovered Felwood. See how it's all lush and green behind us? Look, can you see what's happening? Yeah, it's all starting to die off and it happens very slowly and oh my god, that's a boss level. Look at that, it's got a skull. It aggroed from absolutely miles away. We are going to get caned. It's got 1800 health. It, well, we can't go in there basically. I hope you enjoyed that quick look at Felwood because that's about all we're going to see. Look at it, it's chasing us. Oh my lord. Okay, that would have basically one-shotted us. So yeah, let's not go in any further but Basically, the forest is dead there. It's like it once was a part of Ashenvale. And if we zoom out onto the main map of Kalimdor here, our main actual continent, you can see that it used to be part of Ashenvale all up here, but it's basically become corrupted now and uh, got renamed Fell Wood. So we'll, we will be questing there later on. And of course, we'll be doing our best to fight back that corruption. All right, back into the Howling Vale. Let's go down our little side path here. We'll take down these tree ants as we go. <clears throat> I need a target. You do need a target. Sorry about that, Seraphis. There's one watching us from up on high. Actually, let's just kill a couple of these little stags. We'll do some hunting while we go, because like I said, I do want to actually level up our skinning. In fact, we'll take a look at that in a minute and see, see what we're up to. Hit P, go to your professions. And of course, here we go in the middle here. Skinning is 139 out of 165. So we do need to start getting that up into the 150 sort of mark in order to be able to actually 
probably gain another skinning tier. And you can see there we've gone up to 140, so it's not too far, not too much to go. Just 10 or so mobs, uh, wild beasts that we need to kill that we can skin, so it's not so bad after all. And look what we've found, of course, this is the cave that the quest text actually talks about. So isn't it fantastic how the text does line up with what's out in the world? And of course, there's had to have been during development all sorts of crazy um, coordination going on there between the world builders and the quest. Oh, and look at this, it's just as well we did kill them off because we've got ourselves another blue to put on the auction house here called a Rakzer Club, and that is a mace, and of course we can't use it, but that'll also fetch a pretty penny on the AH, and look at that, nice big club uh, for somebody to purchase, so more money, 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 I love random drops. Okay, into the cave, and of course if you're in a cave, you'll generally find tin veins or copper veins or whatever your, whatever zone you're in, whatever tier uh, of nodes that appear in that zone, uh, caves and dungeons generally tend to have more, which makes sense, of course. All right, here we go. Another crazed ancient. So it's just a little tunnel, a little thoroughfare. That's okay. And the good old sound of clear casting there as well. Oh, we've got more than one coming. That's interesting. Let's lock it down. And we'll do a whole bunch of instants just to kill it off very quickly. Again, not very mana efficient, but that's okay. They're nice and fast in an emergency situation. All right, so we've ended up here in the Howling Vale. Look at that. If you'd never come up through this tunnel, you'd never even know that this was here, would you? Just, again, the attention to detail in this game is just superb. Seriously, hours and hours and hours of fun wandering around, having grand adventures. And look at this, we found ourselves a worn chest up here. So we'll get rid of these crazed ancients that are clearly protecting it. And look at that, some kind of temple, old night elf temple. It still cracks me up, those death animations. It's awesome. All right, so what do we have here? A wand chest. And finally, we have, yes, we've got it, the iron shaft. Here it is, folks. And let's read what that says. Intricate yet dormant runes adorn the section, this section of the rod. All right, so I think we're done for around here, unless we have a bit more of an explore. I don't think there's going to be much more to actually see. So I think we should have a look at our map and see what is updated. All right, so it looks like we have to make our way south back to, uh, yeah, here we go, a couple of handins at the Rainwood Tower. We've got the one where we had to search the bowl for those five uh, regents to help the child, so hopefully that's the uh, friendly satyr that's the hand in there, and of course returning to Sheldrin at Rainwood with the pieces of the rod that we've just collected. Now, I just did notice on the map there that we may be able to head south from here and do a bit of a shortcut but no, look at that. You can see way off in the distance there. There's great big hills. We'll probably get ourselves stuck or something like that. So let's head back out the normal way. Oh, actually, we can probably cut across here. Because it's, of course, easy to jump down. It's not easy to climb up. But yeah, look at that. We can actually jump down here. We may have been able to actually sneak over there. No, no, we wouldn't have been able to. They've blocked that off. All right, let's kill a couple more of these stags. Do some hunting, some wild hunting. Which, of course, you can do in WoW. You're not limited to just doing the quests. You don't want to be um, pulled through the game if you want to be a bit more sort of sandboxy open world. Believe it or not, you can still do that in WoW. And, of course, it harks back to what I was saying earlier in terms... Oh, oh, there's a deer. Let's love that just in case we haven't got that for our achievement. There we go. Um, you can, uh, you know, like I was saying in a few episodes back, you can turn off all of your quest objectives, turn off your quest tracking, and just use your nous to get around. And you know what? That's actually quite fun. And I know of a number of players that do that. They write themselves rules of engagement in terms of, um, you know, it's not really role playing, but how to adventure out in the open world. Uh, without using all of the modern conveniences and of course it means turning off your quest tracker you're still allowed to use the map but generally speaking they uh, make part of the game actually discovering where you are so they'll actually look around and use visual landmarks just as you would if you were wandering about in the real world um, sometimes they don't even use the map by the way and 
you know, in order to get from one place to the other, they actually have to try and figure it out and know the lay of the land. And you know what? If you've got the time, that is actually a really cool thing to do because you get to know the world very well. Uh, and of course, it feels like you're in a, uh, in a grand adventure, like an open-ended RPG. It really does change the feel of the game compared to just basically following pointers on a map. And of course, a lot of people play that way. Again, I'm not criticizing it. If that's your cup of tea, that is absolutely fine. 143 are skinning up to, by the way. Um, but you know what? You, you kind of get pulled through the game and you don't take any notice of the small details, like all the amazing things in the world. Uh, and again, you don't really end up knowing where you are in the place of the world. Seriously, if you haven't tried it before, give it a go. It's actually really fun. Create a tune and try and avoid all of the aids and see how you go. Of course, you do have to have the time to do it in the first place. All right, so let's keep heading down. Basically, the road, I think, is the best way to go, and that will effectively take us down to here at the Rainwood Tower. And now, this is another thing. We've got these ghost poor alphas here. Just because they're flagged red, which means they'll aggro on us, doesn't mean that we can't hunt them. We don't have to be on a quest of any description to actually hunt them. And they should, they should actually, there we go, ghost poor alpha. We should be able to skin them. Yeah, there we go. Just because they're not uh, beasts or creatures, if you like, you can see that the tooltip shows this stag here to be a beast. Just because they're not beasts still means you can actually use them for skinning. Look at that, the stags actually do a bit of a charge. That's very cool. And our skinning is already up to 146. Look at that view! Look at it! It's just, seriously, blows me away every single time. I just love the feel of being out and about in this world. Uh, I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. And by the way, speaking, seeing as we're on the subject, speaking of kind of open world, um, you know, unguided adventuring, going on a grand adventure, a hunter class, by the way, is a fantastic feeling class to do that on because you are quite literally a hunter. And of course, you are absolutely having to hunt for your supper because unless things have changed, the last time I actually played a hunter, you have to hunt for meat to feed your pet or else they'll get unhappy. Now, I did read some rumors somewhere along the way that they were maybe taking out that happiness system, the mood of your pet. I really, gosh, will you die already? Look at that! This thing just won't die. That's amazing. God. Um, I read somewhere that they'd actually taken that out. Now, I do have a relatively high level hunter, but I haven't played it for quite some time. So I might have to hop on there and see that it's uh, see if it's changed or not. I really hope it hasn't because... Oh, I wonder if we have to love that. Hang on. There we go. Love the forest moth. Uh, because that was a big part of being a hunter and kind of like raising Pokemon if you know what I mean You had a number of different pets that you could have out and tame of course uh, And feeding and caring for them was all part of being a good hunter And it had major benefits too or has major benefits if it's still going and that was of course if your pet was in a certain mood it would actually affect its stats so if you let your pet go hungry and get unhappy it actually wasn't as effective in combat so you always had a bit of a motivation to really keep it well fed and that would actually uh, add a additional damage bonus to its stats which is very cool so anyway I certainly hope that that's still the case and that they haven't dumbed it down because they're also, through doing that, that also created a market on the auction house for meat, as you can well imagine. Because, of course, all the hunters around the area would want to feed their pets, but couldn't be bothered hunting. But anyway, yeah, the point is that if you do enjoy that open world sort of feel, roll a hunter. And uh, you'll have lots of fun feeling like you are an adventurer in a brand new world. It's really fun. Anyway, you can see our skinning there has gone up to level 150. I'm pretty sure from memory that we'd be able to go to a trainer now and actually uh, that would be high enough to actually go to the next tier of our skinning craft but I uh, can't remember so we'll have to do that next time we're in Darnassus which by the way it won't be too far away because look at our bags rapidly filling up there and uh, keeping an eye as well you can see we're level 31 and we're about three quarters of the way through so we're nearly 32 in fact 
we need to make sure that we're not going to miss out on any dungeons so in fact let's just have a look at the specific dungeon list and you can see we've got till level 34 to run Gnomeragon so yeah I think in the next couple of episodes we better actually queue up for that and hit that up or else we'll be way too low and we may indeed miss out and we don't want to do that in the dungeon finder. Alright so let's head up to Rainwood Retreat, Rainwood Tower, here we go past the Horde. Ah the great outdoors. And here's good old Sheldron, hello. And yes we've got the Iron Shaft, I'm pleased to see you're back and there you go ta-da and of course once again reminding you guys see that uh, there the scrolling combat text Darnassus rep increased by 250 and if we bring up our U screen not our P screen bring up our U screen have a look at our reps you can see we're 14,761 rep out of 21,000 and of course we're trying to go for exalted so we can get one of their mounts which is going to be lots of fun all right playing possum the last piece of the rod oh okay so we need more pieces of this rod that's interesting the last piece of the rod is held by druids of the claw I asked their leader Oso Bramblescar to give it to me but he and his guardians nearly killed me oh dear uh, clearly they're too affected by the horde's corruption of the forest heart and of course you'll know that we've already cleansed that forest forest heart in fact and we've kind of done a bit of a backpedal here in terms of quest we've sort of gone the wrong way around in mind uh, but I have an idea for how you can get into Oso's cave and grab the pommel and of course pommel is the end of the sword hilt there um, so ever since I was a fawn I've been pretty good at playing possum it works great against bears this will be interesting and I can teach you go east to the shady nook and if they try to get you just use my technique so we have to obtain the final piece of Dartol's rod there we go it is going to be the final piece um, the iron pommel and we'll get ourselves some braces there which mm, they're a little bit better than what we've got they are an item level 23 instead of item, item level 18 which is what we've got now and they give us extra armor and extra, extra intellect which is what we want uh, and we don't mind losing a bit of stamina and hit rating to be honest so we'll probably probably actually take those so let's accept that quest okay playing possum is super easy Seraphis just watch that's interesting and it says their Sheldron begins to play possum it's interesting yeah, okay I've See, it wasn't too hard, was it? You'll have no problem fooling stinky old Oso Bramblepaw and his guardians now. All right, so we've got ourselves in our bag. Here it is. You can see Sheldrons playing possum technique. So that's a bit of a laugh, isn't it? Use play possum, which may trick others into ignoring you. Lasts up to six minutes and only works in the shady nook. So let's bring up our map. And there we go, we can see that the Shady Nook is just over the road, and that's to the east of us. And I guess that what we have to do is use that instruction manual and we'll turn into a possum and hopefully survive. Oh, oh, that's why it's bringing back memories. Do you remember? That's the area, the Shady Nook there, where we went down into and we found that really, really powerful bear. And of course, his name was Oso, Oso Bramblescar. Ah, it's all coming back to me now and of course that's right it is a quest so by playing possum he's actually not going to attack us so that's how we get around that and try and go into the cave all right so we were right it is part of a quest all right here we go Everest ill whisper this is the satyr here that we very rarely actually get to see up close and personal because he's turned to our side five moonstones are required to assure that the girl is healed well we've tried that before and it hasn't worked we'll see what happens uh, you have all of the moonstones that are needed and yet it is said that a sacrifice of life is the only way to ensure the saving of another this is, doesn't uh, sound too good I will ensure that no matter what the moonstones will cure Rolara well that's a bold claim yikes what happened there with his razor sharp claws Everest digs into his chest and removes his beating heart Placing it with the fallen moonstones, miraculously the satyr does not die. Oh my god, he is bathed in a warm light, as you saw there, and Avarice Ill Whisper is transformed. Well, I certainly didn't expect that to happen. Gosh, what a sacrifice. Let's see what he's got to say. Hello. Wow. Okay, all's well. Thank you for saving me from a fate worse than death. 
Sarah for, oh, well, goodness me, for saving both the child and myself. <clears throat> well, the child is almost saved. All you have to do is take the Moonstones back to the west, down the road to Astronar, hand them into Pelturus, and he'll know what to do. Go in peace, my friend, Elune be praised. So there we go. We have to deliver the sanctified Moonstones to Pelturus, White Moon at Astronar in Ashenvale, and we'll be able to also choose a nice reward there. And again, uh, unfortunately, just a little bit low for us, but that's okay. We'll, of course, sell them off and get money. Well, that was certainly most unexpected. Did not uh, see that coming at all, so that was a nice surprise. Anyhow, folks, we've uh, run well over time. <clears throat> so I think what we'll do in the next episode as we have a look at the map is we'll go over here and play possum with that big bear and try and get the last piece of the rod. And then, of course, uh, as long as there's no other bits and bobs that we need, that'll also probably send us back to Astronar where we can go and finally, hopefully, cure the sick little child. And then, of course, we'll make our way down south here. The heroes call to either Stone Talon Mountains or to the northern front and you know what amazingly i'd say that's going to be wrapping up our questing in ashenvale which by the way is a lot shorter than it used to be back in the day it used to take absolutely ages to get through ashenvale although i can see over here we've still actually got a piece of the map uncovered so we're not quite done i'd imagine but yeah it's a lot faster than it was in the old days anyhow that's all for next time as we stand in front of this beautiful moon well on behalf of myself a sambo and of course the wonderful seraphis our level 31 wargan mate just us saying take care we'll see you next time and bye bye